Okay, so we're back today, and um, what I wanted to first discuss is uh, see out. In this example of see out, I can put many things, uh, like I can put an integer, I can put a, a double, and they, they will all work when I run the program. And, uh, granted, they are all stuck together, but I'm not worried about that at this point. And the reason why they work is because the insertion operator is overloaded to accept any built-in data type. So um, it doesn't matter what I put, it's all going to go to the, to the monitor, OK? And this is how I'm, I'm, I'm inserting one thing after another, OK? Uh, let's, let's discuss special characters with C out. So in C out, if I go backslash n, now we know what that's going to do. That's going to create a new line. I can also replace it with a backslash t. And if I run that, it gives me a tab. So that's just like Python. However, what if I wanted to put in a quote? Let's say I wanted to go hello world in quotes. Well, if I do this, this isn't going to work. Because if I, if I try to compile this, it's going to say compilation failed. Um, and it fails. And there's the error message. And it's because it's having difficulty understanding the, it's, it thinks that this is the end. And then it doesn't know what this is. So we have to escape that hello, or I should say that one. And let's escape that one. Okay. So now if we compile it, it's com compiled successfully. And if we run it, and we get the, we get the double quotes in there. Okay. Also, um, if I want to try single quotes, OK. Oops, what did I just do? Yeah, so essentially, now if I run that, it'll be fine. And there it is. So the single quotes work. However, um, here's a tricky one. Since the backslash is the escape character, what if I want to go backslash hello? Will that work? Let's try it. So the backslash doesn't appear. So how do we get it? Well, guess what? You have to escape the backslash character, which means you have to put two backslashes. And so if we run this, now the backslash shows up. Okay. Um, okay. So another way of doing this, uh, essentially, of putting backslashes or even double quotes, is simply to specify the string to be a raw string, and you can specify that with a capital R, and you can't forget the brackets here. So if you do this, that's not going to work. You need to put the brackets in for a raw string. And essentially, what you're doing here is you're saying, tr don't like treat everything in here as just characters. No, you can't have any special characters. Okay, so like. Imagine if I went like backslash n there. That's not going to be seen as a uh, new line character. So if I go compile and run, notice it's going to actually print the backslash n. OK? Uh, the other thing that I wanted to touch upon today is, and I've kind of mentioned this before, but there are are a couple of different ways in which to declare and initialize on the same line, like lines 12 and 13, 
are uh, the same. S same. It's just different ways of doing the same thing. And then, of course, lines 14 and 15 are here you declare and here you initialize. Now, the other thing which I wanted to show you, and this is also part of uh, the C++11 here standard, is auto. Now, what this does is the auto keyword is we're creating a variable called z here, but we're not specifying its data type. Instead, we're specifying that it should be an automatic data type. And the way this works is that the compiler infers its data type based on what we're assigning it to. So in this case, the, the word today in quotes is a string. And so therefore, z will become a string. And so you know when I compile this and I run this, uh, you can see today is, gets printed out and no problems. Okay, um, and I'm, I'm printing it out right here. That was my variable z right there. But if I change this to be, let's say, you know, an integer, then if I compile and I run this, it still works. You can see the 99 is there after hello world. But now z is an integer, and and I can change it again. If I go 3.14159, uh, as like a, a double in this case, or a float, and I compile and run, that works as well. Okay, So it's getting a little bit closer to like what Python is like. But remember, line 17, we're still declaring and initializing on the same line. But we're just, we're, in a way, you're kind of being lazy and not specifying the data type. You're saying auto instead. So, so far, we've looked at some different data types. We know that we can have an int. And um, we know that for a value, you know, x can be equal to 1. Uh, we can do we can do double. We can set x equal to a float, or a, uh, I should say, a, a double, which is a real number with a decimal place, right? Of course, these have semicolons here. Um, also, the other type is another integer, which is a long, and that can be a number that that has uh, that can be an integer that is bigger than what a standard uh, integer could be and I th think that number okay so in order to kind of take a look at how big things are let's take a look here I've got this program that I've written before uh, and it ends up showing me let's just go to the bottom for a second here it shows me the size of. So size of will return the number of bytes that a uh, variable uses. So in this case, i is an integer, l is a long, unsigned int is, a, is ui. All these have been declared above here. And for an integer, that's my biggest positive number, and that's my biggest negative number. The question now is, how, how can we determine this based on the size of it? So let me compile this, and let me run it. And if you'll notice, it tells me that the size of an int is 4 bytes. Now, let's go and do some calculations here. So uh, we know that. Let's, let's get rid of this for a second. And there, we're here. So let's just start from scratch. And we know that if an int is 4 bytes on this operating system, then there are 8 bits in, in every byte, or in each byte. 
Therefore, we know that if the int is 4, we know that the int must contain 32 bits. Okay? How many, how many unique um, numbers can be represented with 32 bits in, in binary? So that would be 2 to the power of 32. So if we do that, and, and, and we can actually uh, figure this out here by maybe starting up Python just for a second, and um, we can go 2 to the power of 32. That's going to give us 4 billion something something. Now, remember, th those number of numbers has to include negative numbers as well. So that means half of those numbers have to be negative and half of them are positive. But also, so the, the positive ones, right, start at zero. So if you think, okay, like if you're starting at zero going up to a positive number, then that means that the biggest number is going to be one less than half of this. So if we go, he, oops, wrong window. If we go here and we go um, 2 to the power of 32 divided by 2, well, there you go. And now if we subtract 1, there, that's our biggest positive number. And in fact, uh, if we go back to our code, you'll see that that number corresponds. See? And with the number that we calculated, uh, oops, this one. So let's kind of pull it over. And then you'll see that they match. See? So, and remember why I'm subtracting 1 is because we're starting from 0. We're not starting from 1. And, and so therefore, the biggest negative number is that one. So essentially, Take, take 2 to the power of 32, cut it in half. Half of the numbers can be negative. Half of the numbers can be positive. And so, the, so when you cut it in half, that's the biggest negative number. And it, there it is. OK? Um, so now we have a method, right, of figuring out what the minimum and maximum values are. So notice that when I ran it, it also gives us, for long, it's 8. So if we go back to our calculation, right? So 8 bytes, OK. Where's my thing? Here we go. So what am I going to get for 8 bytes now? So that's um, 8 bytes times 8 bits. That's 64. So 2 to the power of 64. But now, of course, again, we're going to have to divide that by 2. Okay, And then we have to subtract 1. And that's the, that's the biggest uh, number you can have in a long. Now, however, what I will say is if you have an unsigned long, then it's just this minus 1. That's the biggest. Because minus 1, because again, you're starting from 0. So unsigned right, means that you can't have negatives. So the entire number system can be represented all as positive numbers. Now that's a pretty big number. Notice it's much bigger than 2 billion, which was the number for ints. right? Now, if you just want to go unsigned int, you can get up to 4.2 billion. Okay, Remember that one was, if I just kind of scroll it up a little bit, um, that was 2 to the power of 32. So that with, if, you, you, if you do unsigned, basically, you can't have negative representation in the number. Okay, So unsigned int is still 4, but just that they're all, all those numbers are given to the positive numbers. Uh, notice chars are uh, only one byte, just one byte. So with one byte, 
that's uh, 2 to the power of 8, okay, and that's 256. So a char, in this case, right, is actually a integer representation of the ASCII value of the character. So for example, if I kind of make this bigger and I get out of this and I go man uh, ASCII, you can now see right that the there's there is the character right here's the character here these are these aren't really um, okay so these are kind of where 32 is kind of where the normal ones kind of start okay so the when I say 32 I'm looking at this decimal column here so the second column here is decimal and the character is the third column so if I scroll down, 32 is space, 33 exclamation mark, and so on, right? F number 48 is zero. So, so in other words, this is kind of cool, is if I go back to my um, program, not this one, but let's say this one, and if I declare a, a char, Let's say I say char c equals a, like this. And then I go c out. And let's just do c out, just to get rid of all this stuff for the time being. And we'll just go c out c. And so now if I compile this and run it, you notice I get the letter A out, which is, which is fine. That's what I am expecting. But notice that the, if I replace the letter A, now remember, characters have to be single quoted, right? But I can actually do this, actually 65. And now, should this work? Well, let's try it. F9, yep, it compiles and it works. And I just happen to memorize that 65 is capital A. And if I go back, I'll show you. So capital A is right there. And it's decimal 65. So the, the cool thing about this is that you, know, um, you can do arithmetic now. For example, I could go back to my code and I can I can I can do something like uh, if I now here's the interesting thing if I go C out C minus one what's that gonna give me sixty four it doesn't give me so now the question is how would I change that to let's say uh, is well, if I go plus one, is that a B? Might be. Okay, so it's giving me 66. So I can now do a typecasting, and I can go char, and I can go like that, and then I can compile it and run it, and it gives me a B. So I'm changing it back to a char here. Okay? So I'm, it, when I see out it, it's but essentially in memory though please understand that it's still an integer in memory okay so it would be 66 in memory um, and obviously you know you can't go out of bounds of the one byte so if you go over 256 it's not gonna work okay so once again looking at um, the size of things here so on this machine, int was four bytes, long was eight. Unsigned int is still four, okay? And a short is two, so that's two bytes. So that's two times eight, which is 16. So essentially somewhere around like 64,000 or so. So you can go up to negative 32,000 to positive 32,000 for a short. Um, now floats don't work the same floats and doubles don't work the same way. 
because part of the number has to be storing the decimal places and part of the number has to be storing the exponent. So I'm not sure exactly how this works. Um, char again is one byte, but essentially, like look at the number of bytes of, of um, float and double. It, it, it goes from four to eight and then long double is 16, okay? This is just ridiculously humongous. Um, and bool, although bool can only be true or false, it still takes up uh, one byte. And reason for that is because we can't address anything smaller than one byte. Okay? And then um, because of memory address locations are the, the finest divisible unit of a memory location is one byte. And um, yeah, so that's about it. Okay. Um, some other, I've got some other numbers here, like an unsigned int can be a maximum number there. And uh, and here's here's a way to declare them as being long or unsigned. Okay. Just remember, if you declare anything as unsigned, it can't be negative. Okay, the other thing I wanted to show you guys today is um, the keyword const here on line 10. In this case, the const keyword prevents the uh, modification of the variable pi in the future. So for example, if I, if I went like this here and I went um, pi equals uh, 3.4, and if I tried to compile this, it would fail. Okay, because I'm, I'm I have a read-only variable, and I'm trying to assign to it. I've declared it const on, on line ten, so I cannot change it. You might ask. So Python doesn't have this type of thing where you, you can't you, you can where you you can't prevent a variable from changing. So why have it in C++? Well, the reason sometimes is because um, you maybe working on a project with many people and you don't want a variable to accidentally be modified and you can declare it as const. If you compile it and somebody somewhere accidentally changes it, it it's not going to compile. Okay, So it'll be caught before runtime. The other reason is because I think there might be some optimizations that the compiler can do when you declare things as being const to try and make your code faster. Okay? Because it knows that it, it's never going to be able to modify the that variable. So um, so you can see if I compile this now, it compiles successfully and I run it and everything seems good. Okay? Notice that's a pretty big number, e to the 307. So most handheld calculators can't do that. So the next kind of issue or topic that I want to discuss is how do you get input from the keyboard? With Python, you use input. But with C++, you have to use C in here on line 9. So notice the direction of the air of the greater than symbols is in the opposite direction. So that is called the extraction operator. Remember how this works in terms of the picture that we had in terms of our C++ program. We have, here's our, our C++ program. We have information coming out. That's a stream, and we have information going in. That's a stream. This stream comes from the keyboard, and this stream goes out to your console monitor. Okay? Um, and this, to put things into this stream, you go like this. Okay? To put things, to grab, not to put things, but to grab things from the input stream, you do the opposite direction. 
Okay, so this is called the insertion operator, and this one is called the extraction operator. Okay, so going back to the code now. Notice that this is, I'm inserting enter your age, the string, into the cout stream. And here, I'm grabbing information from the c in stream. I'm extracting it and putting it into age. So the arrows are the direction w in which the data goes. Okay, think of it that way. Now, if I run this, if I compile it, okay, and I run it, it says, yep, enter your age, and I'll say, you know, 33, because that's my real age, and I'll hit enter, and you can see that it says you are 33 years old. Perfect, that's what I wanted. So I want you to modify this program such that instead of asking your age, it asks for your name. So pause the video now, modify this program to ask for your name instead, and get it to say your name is. Try it. OK, so there it is. There's the program. Notice I changed it from uh, int to a string. And I'm using cin to grab the name. And I'm saying, so let's compile it. And let's run it. And let's put my name in. Um, you know, Rob, enter. Hello, Rob. Notice there's no space after hello, so that was a bit of a mistake. Maybe we should do that there. And we'll um, compile it again, run it again. And that's better. OK. Uh, but what if I wanted to put a last name as well? Let's try running it again. Enter your name. Rob Smith. Fake, fictitious name. Hello, Rob. Wait, where's my last name? It didn't print it. What? Is this an error? What went wrong? So this is actually on purpose. I did this specifically so that you would understand that, guess what? Cn is space delimited. OK? I think that's the way you spell delimited. Essentially, whenever you hit a space, now that, that um, It's, it's, it's still there, OK? In other words, you can still grab stuff off of the input stream. Like, I could do this. For example, right after this, I could go C in last name. Obviously, I'd have to create this, right? So I could go, you know, comma, uh, last name. And so now, if I did this, and I, I print, I, and now I could print name, and then I'd have to print uh, last name. Obviously, there's not going to be a space in between there, but it, it doesn't matter right now, because I just want to show you how it's going to work. So if I run this, and I go John Smith, it's going to say, hello, John Smith. So you understand what's happening here is that, let's go back to the image, is that essentially along the input stream, OK? So let's, let's say here's my program, and here's the input stream. I have what's, what got put on here first? Ready? What's on here first?
the first thing on here was John. The second thing on here was Smith. This gets read coming into CN, and then here's the space, and then it, CN stops. This is still hanging here in the input stream, and if we do another CN on line 10, then we're going to get that one as well. Okay? But this is tedious. What if you don't know how many spaces there are? This is kind of ridiculous. There must be a better way of doing this. And there is. So instead of using C in in this way to get a string that contains spaces, instead, let's just not use this method and let's use a different method. Okay? And in, we're going to use get line here. And we'll use get line and we'll say uh, grab from C in input stream and put it into the name variable. Okay, so now I can, there. So now if I run, if I run this now, watch. Oops, what just happened? Here we go. John Smith, hello John Smith. So that works. It doesn't matter how many spaces I put here, right? It's still going to work. It's it's going to take everything until up until I hit enter, which is kind of like what I which which might be what you want. So in this case, using get line is a way of including spaces. So another thing that I wanted to show in this video is um, integer divided by integer will actually produce an integer. So you might think that answer is going to be 1.5, 3 divided by 2, but it's not. So notice it produces an answer of 1. Okay, um, let's just comment this stuff out here for a second because I'm doing something else right now. But essentially, if I promote one of them to a double, now if I compile it and run it, sure enough, I get 1.5. Okay, let's take out this guy too. Actually, we can take out all this for now. Uh, but now, you might say, okay, well, that's great, but what if we had, let's say, um, what if we wanted the output to be an integer? Now, obviously, I could take this away, to the, the point zero, but I can also typecast it using the data type that I want it to be. So in this case, if I typecast 3 divided by 2.0 back into an int, now if I compile this and I run it, you'll notice I'm going to get 1, not 2. Even though 3 divided by 2 is 1.5, the int doesn't round up. It simply casts it into an integer. So I'm changing the double, 1.5, into an integer, which effectively just removes the 0.5 and leaves, with, leaves me with 1. So that's an example of typecasting there. Okay, So typecasting is essentially where you uh, type the data type that you want it to be typecast into and put brackets around whatever you want it to be. So for example, if I went something like uh, double, uh, you know, x, and I said x is 3.14. And now if I go C out uh, int x, so in this case, um, I'm going to get just the 3. OK? There you go. So um, and it, by the way, like I said, it doesn't matter even if this was a 3.9 it's still going to be 3. Okay? 
So I'm going to leave you guys today with a little assignment. Essentially what I'd like you to do is write two little programs. One of them, uh, write a program that will ask the user for a S Celsius uh, temperature and return, uh, print out the equivalent Fahrenheit. And the other program is uh, write a program that will accept a integer less than 100, which is represented as the amount of change that has to be returned by, let's say, a supermarket teller, and express the number of quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies that is the least amount of coins that the teller needs to return for that given amount of. So for example, let's say if the teller had to return 66 cents, then you would say uh, two quarters, uh, one dime, one nickel, and one penny. Okay. So that's the end of this lesson.